Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this cool Williams Firepower 2 pinball machine that a customer brought into us. And uh, in the first video, we kind of looked it over a little bit, and then we worked on the power supply. Um, and it's kind of doing its thing, but it, it's kind of limping along, so we're trying to get it a little better. Um, none of the solenoids are working on the play field. A whole bunch of the lights are out. So the displays are doing some things they shouldn't be doing. And uh, we are up to the point where we're going to pull out the MPU and the driver board and look those over a little bit and see what we can do for preventative maintenance to spruce them up a little bit. And then we'll work on the play field a little bit as well. So uh, we've got it up. It won't start a game. You can hit start and it'll try, but it won't kick the ball out. It's got a little bit of issues going on. Um, it's kind of doing its thing. Let's see, uh, the displays, we're missing two of the digits. The ones digit on display one and three, and then they, they kind of do the wrong thing sometimes. The soundboard's kind of doing the right thing. The lights are mostly working. That's the solenoid test. It's not doing what it should. It's saying a couple switches are closed, but I think they're the trough ones. Yeah, let's see, if I hold another one down, it gives me a third one. So I think that's probably all right. And then these are just some of the settings. So it doesn't always boot to a track mode. Sometimes the um, it comes up kind of in between. <laughs> so I think that may be the, the batteries that save your high score. You notice there isn't a high score saved on it. Um, it may be that, uh, or it may have been the power supply voltage wasn't quite right. But um, we're going to work the MPU next. Now this particular one has been worked on about 10 years ago. Um, by Lenny's Pinball World. So we're going to, uh, I don't know those folks, I'm sure they're good people though, but we're going to pull these out. It's been 10 years, we'll give them another little little uh, look over. <laughs> and then uh, once we get that done, we'll troubleshoot through here. It'd be interesting to see if they uh, uh, replace the inter the interboard connector or any of that stuff at the time that it was worked on. I, under I understand that that place does house calls, so if you're Working on stuff at somebody's house, it's not quite as easy to be as thorough sometimes. But we'll see what they were able to pull off. The game is working and has been working for a while, apparently. It's uh, it's just gotten to the point where it's uh, it needs a little service. So uh, I'm going to turn everything off. We'll pull out both of those boards, and I'll show you why once we get them out. They connect together and uh, put them on the bench and look them over. Now, but notice, it is a working game. Right, so we're starting with a working game. Okay, so this is the MPU board. This is probably a System 7, maybe? Look at this. Look what they're doing to me. Spam risk. Uh-huh. Apple told me not to, call, not to answer it, people. Look, if you're calling from Rio Grande City, Texas, I'm sorry. But Apple's telling me not to talk to you. I, I don't know. I don't really trust Apple. But, I don't know, they're saying it's a spam call. Call from a different number. <laughs> Alright, so I think this is a System 7, maybe? 7-ish? System 7, possibly? Firepower 2? I haven't looked that up. Don't quote me. Um, but again, you saw everything's really working. So we're just doing things to make sure that it reliably boots up. So we're, I'm checking to see uh, what this may need done to it. You saw how the displays were kind of tripping. Stuff like that is usually a bad connection. So uh, that's the type of thing that you, we want to clean the connectors and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, so okay, I'm going to show Lenny's Pinball World's number and everything. He's putting it on his game, his boards and stuff, so I don't think he'll mind. I don't know Mr. Lenny, uh, but I think he does in-house pinball repair, which is rare. Okay, so uh, um, here's his sticker on it. Mr. Lenny has worked on this in the past and apparently got it up and running in the guy's house. 
That's rare. I don't know really. I only have heard of two people that do that. Lenny and Clay, I think, is all I know about. There's probably more, but I'm not endorsing him. I'm sure he's a good guy, though. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the ROMs out. I see one here that just looks a little looks a little oxidized, you know. So I'm going to take these, these ROM chips out one by one, clean the legs, and put them right back in. When we got this in, if you watched the other video, basically it would come up and it wouldn't completely boot. Um, it would kind of just do some weird stuff, and you couldn't completely tell what was going on because the, the displays were doing something weird. And then the um, we tried to start a game, and all of the lamps died and things like that. So we rebuilt the power supply first. We've got a good 5 volts leaving the power supply. We don't know yet how much of it gets over here, but it's up and running, so at least 4.8 or so, I'm sure. Um, but we're doing things to try to make it where it uh, reliably boots each time and it has a nice solid, uh, um, you know, electrical situation. <laughs> um, so we're doing things that would call, we're, we're trying to look for things that would cause intermittent failures because the thing's working, but it's not reliable, right? So um, stuff like this will do that. So basically if, if the software, if one of those pins decides it's not touching the socket right and the the ones and zeros don't get through the pin to the board. Um, it might reset. It might lock up. It might do something like the lights turn off, you know, like it did to us. So, um, so that's the first step. So I'm gonna pull these out one at a time, clean the legs off, and then put them right back in. I've heard people say deoxit's the best to use for that. It probably is. We usually use a little file to clean the side of the legs. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So let me get my little chip extractor and extract the chips. You can see what I'm talking about. The uh, the legs that just get dirty just from all the tarnish and stuff. And we clean them up. They will make better contact with the socket. The socket isn't the. They make a brand called Scan B S C A N B E Scan B, and they're kind of lesser than. They don't work as good. But these are the R and W. I think ones. They're a little better, so you don't have to worry about the sockets quite as much unless they're the Scan Bs. Some people swear by putting brand new sockets in them, but I got to be honest with you, I have rarely found, and again, I have rarely found sockets that are bad. I, I do every once in a while, and some people swear by it. They go, oh no, you got to replace all of them, they're crap, oh, well. I have not found that to be true in my experience. But someone more experienced than me <laughs> would disagree, maybe. So I don't know, but I don't I don't usually replace the sockets unless I can tell something's wrong or the scan B ones, yeah, they they look pretty bad. They they fall apart whenever you take them apart and they only grab one side of the the leg, which is a problem. But these ones are dual wipe. They grab both sides of the leg. I think the scan B ones the way they work is they grab the sides of the leg instead of the flat the the wider part of the leg. I think that's the problem. But um yeah, this this type here is fine in my opinion. So we're going to leave the sockets, and as you saw, the game is running. Um, but stuff like this will cause an intermittent problem. You know, if it can't read that, if it can't read one little byte off of that chip, the whole thing will reset, lock up, something. So uh, let me show you what it looks like after we clean it. Good as new. Don't stare at it too hard; it might burn your eyes. Look at it reflecting the light right at you. Look at it. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to clean the other ones. And uh, it looks like the, the CPU chip is a little bit crusty too. So we'll get on that. And uh, hopefully that will help it be call. better. Unknown call. They're calling back, people. It's the spammers again. The date on them is December 2025. So he's replaced them not too long ago. So... We'll talk to him about it. Just make sure he knows that he needs to swap those every once in a while. I, I think he does, though. He's had this for... So that's another thing. He's had this for a long time. Right? I mean, we know that there's a receipt in it from when it was worked on by the other guy. We know he's had it for 27 years at least. Right? So I think we're going to leave it. All right. So the connectors are a problem. Basically, bad solder, especially on these inner board connectors, can really cause you problems. But we're having trouble with the displays, right? So the displays connect up here. Let's see if 
Let's see if solder could be our problem. Um, they don't look great, but that's kind of how they look from the factory on these Williams boards. I can't tell for sure. That's our problem, but it also can be just if the connector itself is dirty, the pins and the the, uh, the little contact inside of the thing. So I'm going to resolder all of them, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll clean the edge of the pins. Just make sure everything's nice and bright and shiny. Same thing down here, and then we'll move on to the driver board. See it? See it waiting us up there? So I'll clean all of those and resolder all of the pins, and then uh, that'll be about it for the for the MPU. So here's the driver board that connects to that one. Um, this 40 pin connector is usually your main problem whenever you're getting problems with booting and things like that. Basically, whenever the game comes up, the CPU reads the ROMs and then it checks the PIAs, the uh, 6821s, and so it it um, one of them is up here, or I guess two of them are up there. One does displays, and one does sound, I think. And then, uh, I may have that wrong. I can't remember what the other PIA does. Oh, I think it does, I think it does like, uh, this little, well, you wouldn't think they'd use a whole thing for that. One of those does displays, not sure what the other one does. Uh, and down here, this one, does solenoids, this one does lamps, and this one does switches. So it talks to those PIAs when it starts up, and so it talks over this connector down to these three PIAs on the driver board. If one of these is messed up, it can lock up the, the booting uh, where the game won't boot, stuff like that. Even if there's just a bad signal to one of them, it'll do that. So this connector is kind of important. They basically split the board in half by putting everything on the board. Uh, you know, so it's one big, huge board really that they've split in half by making that connector. Um, so we got to get that connector really nice. Now, if you look at it, it's like a it's a strange connector. It's a female connector that the pins fit through from the bottom. And they're known for messing up. Basically, these things were rated at something like 30 connections. And then, if, so if the board's been removed more than 30 times, it's like, it's tripping. So let's see if it's got bad solder joints. That's solder, S-O-D-D-E-R. Deal with it. Say no go. Um, I don't see any necessarily, but they don't feel great either. So what I usually do is I replace the entire connectors. That's the original one. It hasn't been swapped yet. Um, it's 50 pins it looks like. 40 pins. Uh, 40 pins across there. So I'm going to replace all of those little connectors, the housing and everything, just so we make sure we've got a nice connection uh, to there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to remove the old one and put on new ones. Okay, here's the original one. It's just a little tired, I think. And then here's the new one. We're going to put that sucker in. Notice it's slightly bigger, so you only have to put four of them on. Now, here's where you can get those. Great Plains Electronics. We don't really know Ed, the guy that runs this, but he's always done us right, so we always buy stuff from him. So if you're going to, if you need little connectors and stuff for pinball machines or arcade games, any of the weird little connectors you need, and you need a little chip or something, a little chippage, go buy them from Ed at Great Plains Electronics. He's the man. There's the part number that you need. Now, you could just Google that part number and buy them somewhere else, but why would you do that? I'm telling you to buy them from Ed. He's cheaper than everybody, too. Go check it out. Tell me I'm wrong. 
Now, while you're spending money, look at this. I want to show you something. I removed that whole connector. Nice and clean, pretty clean. And I don't use no desoldering station. I tried one one time, I didn't like them. I use a handheld vacuum pump. A solder sucker. Look, do you see how that's worn off? That says Vampire Tools. Solder sucker. This is the world's best solder sucker. It's advertised as that, right? Now, I didn't believe the hype. I thought, oh, come on, it's crap. But you see how the, the label's wearing off. That's how much I've used this thing. I've had this probably eight months, and I use it every day. And I just took that whole thing off with an eight-month-old solder sucker. And the thing, with the exception of the paint, looks as new as it did the day I bought it. Now, I have been hearing... A shocking number of people say that they bought the cheaper one. The five there's one that's five dollars less than this one. It looks very similar, but it doesn't have the red tip. <laughs> right? Vampire tools. That's the one you want. Okay. Read the reviews, people. If you if you read the other reviews, here's the deal. The other one that's five dollars cheaper, they made this thinner. So what happens is eventually crack, you break the neck off and the thing's useless. This one, though, doesn't do that because it's made a little bit thicker. I'm going to be one of their salespeople. Now, I would never lie to make you buy. The only time, the only reason I'm even mentioning this is because this is a good product. I use it every day, and other people should use it every day. So go get you one of these. Now, here's how you could get one. Go to our website, lionsarcade.com, and there's a parts page at the top. Click the parts link. And we got all kinds of stuff on there that's stuff that we use whenever we do repairs. And one of them is this sucker. <laughs> now, if you click that link and go to Amazon and buy one or anything on Amazon, let's say you click the link, you go look at this and you go, you know what, I'm not completely sold, but what I really need is a tape measure. And then you go over and you get you a Milwaukee tape measure. Well, since you clicked our link... It gives us a tip for you buying the Milwaukee tape measure. It gives us 3%. Now, these things that cost like uh, 20 bucks or something like that. It's an expensive solder sucker, but it's well worth it. So, uh, if we get 3%, that means we get uh, 60 cents each that we sell. Right? And I think I've sold, because it, it shows me a list of what all people bought. It doesn't say who bought it or anything like that. Uh, so I don't got any names or anything, but it shows me a link of of all the a list of all of the things that people are buying on there, right? And they buy all kinds of crazy stuff. Y'all need to some of that stuff y'all are buying. You need to slow down on that. I don't. <laughs> I can't even mention it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so if uh, if we're making sixty cents each, and then uh, I think I've sold about forty of them on these videos. So I've made damn near twenty five dollars selling these things. They should start sending me a, a paycheck for uh, <laughs> for my product placement. Alright, so, yeah, so go check out our website, lionsarcade.com. And if you're, if you're planning on buying anything on Amazon, if you click our link first, you take some of Jeff Bezos, that greedy... You take some of his money and you slide it right into my pocket if you do that. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Okay, so I'm going to put these on, uh, and then I'm going to go around and re-solder all of these as well. All of the connectors on the edge, right? And then we have to try to find a bad transistor because the solenoids aren't working, which means the fuse is blown. Um, so we're going to check all the transistors. But let me put the 40-pin the connector in, and we'll move along. Okay, folks. So I uh, did all that. None of these transistors are shorted. I just checked them all. Every one of them's fine. And... I'll tell you, on a on a Williams driver board, usually if you do have one of these go bad, it will fail catastrophically. It'll blow in half, literally in half. You'll see, like, the whole front of the chip will be blown off, or there'll be a big smoke char mark on the board around it. So none of these have failed. So the solenoid uh, fuse appears to be blown on the power supply, uh, and I'm not sure why yet. It could have just been... Sometimes whenever you lose that signal between the inner board connector, what will happen is when the game comes on, a coil will just lock on. Um, 
because it's getting, it locks up or just getting weird signals. It, like it just doesn't like how it's booting up. I don't know the technical reason it does it, but it, uh, uh, whenever the game comes on, sometimes it'll just lock a coil on if you've got problems with it, with it booting, which could be because of this uh, connector. Um, so it could be that it came on and it locked on a coil um, and that blew the fuse before it blew the transistor. But we're going to check the, um, the coils in the game too um, and figure out uh, what's up with that fuse. It may have just been a fluke thing um, or maybe they've got the wrong value in there or something. But um, basically this thing has already been serviced by Lenny. <laughs> And there's really not that much to do to the driver boards unless you have a problem. We don't have a specific problem, right? You saw the game's up and running. These resistors over here that look so weird, those run pretty hot, and it's just the design of the board. So uh, someone, maybe Lenny, has put new resistors in. They're 27 ohm, 5 watt resistors. And he's, he's put them in, he's kind of high watered them just so that the heat doesn't keep charring the board. So it'll dissipate the heat a little better, you know. Um, those run hot. These don't really run that hot, but it's just how the, the board was designed. These are the, this is uh, the lamp matrix. Okay, you can get rid of these um, and just put jumpers in if you if you change out all of these um, transistors here. There's some you can put a MOSFET in or something like that that makes it where you don't even need these, but. Um, no matter how ugly these get, they continue to work, really. You know, so uh, unless one just burns completely in half, it's still going to work. It, you won't really see an improvement in how the lamps twinkle <laughs> if you replace these. People replace them sometimes just because they look really bad or they're falling apart or whatever. But if you test them, I mean, they're designed to get hot. You know, they put off a lot of heat. If you test them, they, uh, uh, they will still be in value. They'll just be ugly. And some of them were like wire round, wire wound. Um, uh, so it's those big old. They kind of remind me of like a beetle or something. It's like a like a the the whole. It's like a hard looking. It looks like the back of a beetle or something. Um, but th they'll they'll start disintegrating. Like w w layers of it will fall apart, and you'll 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 see the wire inside of it, and you test it, and it's still twenty seven ohms. Um, so they're not too critical, and he's already addressed it in one way or the other with that. Another thing is, um, you have these little jumpers up here. See these, how it's white with a black line? That's actually not a resistor, that's a jumper. It's a zero ohm resistor, which means it's just a shorted wire. And this is the switch matrix. So on the earlier games, the system 3, 4, 5, and 6, they had uh, a resistor here. And they figured out that you would miss some of the quick shots. Like if the if the ball hit the hit the switch and then came back off of it really quick, it wouldn't register. Um, and so on the System Seven games, uh, they swapped all of those from the factory with zero ohm resistors, just jumpers on it. Uh, it made the the switch matrix a little more. Um, um, basically where I could see switch hits a little easier. So um, uh, I guess because the games became more and more fast paced as time went on. I'm pretty sure you can put those jumpers in on an earlier board too and it'll be fine. Um, but this one's the correct one. So again there's really not much to do unless you know of a problem. So if we knew of a row of switches that wasn't working we could track it down through here. Um, there's really no upgrade to do other than the jumper thing. Um, on the lamps, if we knew that one of the rows of lamps wasn't working, maybe we could track it down. But you really, on these, you hardly ever have lamp problems. And then the solenoids, the solenoid fuse is blown, but none of these are shorted. So the problem ain't here, folks. So I'm going to put it all back together. We're going to put it in the machine, and um, I'm going to replace the solenoid fuse, and we'll see what that does. But we've done about all the preventative maintenance we can do on these two boards. Okay, folks, we've got it all back in. It is booting up, but uh, we had our lights, and then they went out again. So we keep having light issues. If you look, we are up in the track. The displays look a lot better. 
we're doing our thing, but no lamps. I don't want to leave it on too long like this, but these are the grounds for the lamps. Nothing. And this is the power for the lamps. Nothing. And if you check the voltage, which we'll do quickly. If I can do it without burning something down here. Well, I thought I had it a minute ago. Maybe I don't have it. I like checking the voltage, like actually at the connector. Yeah, there we go. So say I've got my 18 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Here's the problem with leaving that voltage on. It's all strobed, so the lamps don't actually run on 18 volts. They run on like 6 volts. Right? So if they're not outputting, you've got a bunch of voltage. You've got too much voltage on the, the stuff on the board. I'll bet these are hot. A little bit. Yeah, they're hot. <laughs> okay. So basically, the voltage is getting there, but the, the board is not sending out its signals. Um, so we've got a problem with the, uh, with the lamps. Very well could be this PIA here. A lot of times if that's bad, it will lock up the CPU. The board won't boot with it. But it is possible for it to boot with that bad. So, hmm. I think we're looking we're looking at possibly that or one of these driver chips for the uh, for the the lights having an issue. Since it's all of them are out, you know, we're not getting any lights. It's off right now, but we're not getting any lights. Um, you're probably looking at the PIA, but that's what I'm leaning towards. All right, folks. So I got out the Logic Probe and. The lamp PIA just wasn't acting right. Okay. See my pulsing? When it's in a track, basically all the outputs of the PIA should be pulsing. Okay. So you can actually check it with your logic probe. Half the outputs were pulsing, which was the, the strobes of the lamps, but the grounds of the lamps need to pulse too, so that it can control the matrix. And they weren't, so I replaced it, and I got all of the lights working. So I would show you, but we're about halfway through repairing the play field, and that'll be the next video. Oh, you know what? I could show you on the back box. You're just going to have to take my word for it, based on that one lamp blinking. <laughs> That's a computer controlled lamp. Okay? So, uh, uh, it's doing its thing. So, all the lamps are working again. There's still a couple that are burnt out, but we'll talk about that in the next video. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, on the next one, we'll work on the play field and we'll work through all the light bulbs and all of that stuff. So, make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you so far. Uh, basically, the only thing that, you know, we did maintenance on it, but the only thing that we did for the lamps was replace that PIA. And uh, there was one line of lamps that wasn't working before that is now working. So uh, if you go back to the previous video, you can see that. But we'll talk about it in the next video. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to check out my brother Donnie. That's our brother's channel here on YouTube. Uh, if you like watching us work on these old pinball machines, you'd probably like watching us work on old buildings. We've got a couple old buildings in a small town near here that we're fixing up to help revitalize their downtown area. And uh, we will uh, we'll see you over there, and we'll see you on the next video.